Petrucci 75, Drawing the Head by William Morgan. So it's been a while since I did a Petrucci like this. Um, this week I basically read a book I've been sitting on for a while. Uh, the Mystic Moor had it. I read, I flicked through it and I thought I'd better get this. So I've just devoted the entire Petrucci to it because it's got so much information I want to touch on pretty much everything. So it is predominantly about uh, how to get high class rendering of the head. Uh, you know, the guy typically uses, uh, I think they're called Conti pencils and stuff. You know, he's got a whole whole bit devoted to the materials he uses, but, you know, the thinking applies to any kind of, uh, you know, medium you use. Uh, and his his take is the idea of chiaroscuro, however you pronounce that Italian word. Uh, there is no such thing as line. You create forms through the... Um, representation of value and the contrast of those values gives you what you perceive as line. So you build your images up from shadow shapes and the edges of those shadow shapes uh, when they are perfectly positioned give you apt likeness. Uh, so he talks about things like um, reflective lighting, core shadows, form shadows and the like. He also talks about having a, a kind of simplified way of representing these things. You use two dark shades, uh, you you use the you use coloured paper for the, the mid layer, mid level, and then you've got like one form of light. Uh, you can use negative the negative space of your model to make sure you're putting everything in the right place. So it's not just like the big black shapes you look for, it's you look to make sure that the shapes in between are the right shapes. Uh, you know, if you're crazy enough to, to take a picture and look at it upside down, this will help you make sure you draw the right what's actually there instead of what you think there is. Uh, both of these images, he talks about how because the one on the left was poorly lit, it took him three times as long to do. Because uh, he is predominantly using real life models, uh, and he does talk about how to light them properly. So a lot of this book is kind of like very specific. Uh, yeah, the single focal point is something I've heard Jim Lee talk about. Basically, you put more detail in the face than anywhere else because you want people looking at the face. The face is the most important part of a person. It's how you identify with them. It's the strongest kind of storytelling element that you want to hit home first, so that's where you focus. Uh, yeah, he talks about you know the perspective of the face to make sure that everything kind of lines up. It's... You know, I know about 1.2 point, 2 point, 3 point perspective. It's it's a difficult thing to put it into context with the face because usually you talk about buildings and cityscapes, landscapes. Faces are quite a bit smaller. Uh, so it's a lot less pronounced. Uh, you know, the proportions of the face, you know, where the eyes sit, like in between the crown and the chin halfway, you know, where the nose is in relation to the chin and the eyes and where the mouth is. This is all pretty good general information that applies to both genders and all races, so it's just a good thing to know. Uh, he talks about the eyes, going to such lengths to talk about how the eyeball sits in the skull's eye socket. Eyes are so important to draw properly, and <laughs> uh, I mean, unless you're a cartoonist, but yeah, if, if you really want to go for likeness, you really should figure out how eyelids and all of that stuff works. And yeah, when he comes to mouths, he talks about the donut technique, so that you put the lips on the face but it's it's on top of a muscle group that sits on the face instead of just being kind of stuck on like stickers. All of this really good to helping you, you kind of get a good sense of structure and three-dimensionality is, yeah, my, my least uh, focused on part. So, you know, he, he talks about how you should actually look at ears. They're mostly the same but not quite. Everyone's ears slightly different. So when you're looking at a model, just, you know, look at the model, put your shadow shapes where they need to be. At the end of the book he's got a bit where he talks about making fictitious characters out of, you know, combining different body parts of things and I'm just like, nah. Um, I think the reason I, I don't like them is because they're all bald and, and you put monsters' heads on like women's necks. It doesn't seem like a creature that wouldn't kind of snap its own neck from the weight of its head. The only uh, fictional reference he has I think works is the Washington one because he's taken a model's head and put it on a, a costume that was from a different picture. Uh, all these pig faces, I, I feel like the, the proportions don't 
fly, but maybe it's more my sense of aesthetics that's offended. And a little thumbnail in there on one of the pages between some ugly pirates is Mr. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, and you know, Chiaroscuro, the Renaissance, of course, we, we all think of this Italian guy as Jesus. We have for several centuries. And it is, it is, I would like to do a little Jesus through composite, so we'll see if that's something I do. And, you know, after all this, he talks about working in colour, he talks about the colour wheel, uh, you know, you've got your primary colours, and then your tertiary colours, and then your secondary colours, and then how these colours can be used together to kind of create a mood in your, your image, really. So, yeah, colour temperature is a thing. It's, this is kind of a little bit about... If you have, you know, if, if you use one primary color, what are the, the other colors you use to enhance the colors you've already used? It's it's the stuff I knew existed, but I didn't have the, the actual nuts and bolts of it. So it's great to actually have a sense of, you know, reference for this. And, and you know, th this family of colors is, is, you know, the specific colors you want to combine to warm up colors you've already used and to cool them down because, you know, red is warm and blue is cold. This is the kind of technical information I'd hope to obtain on my course, and it, and it just it's not how it was taught because it wasn't taught. So yeah, great book. I do recommend it. Can't remember what it costs, um, but there is something he says in, in on one of the pages. An illustrator is only as good as his reference, so I might try very hard to 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 use reference in a in a way that I would previously think of as being not so, I don't know, morally viable, something like cheating. We'll see what I do. But yeah, as I was looking for pictures of Jesus to make my own Jesus, uh, I came across this little gem and thought I'd share. So I spread the good news. Jesus is back and he says, sit and spin, motherfucker. So I'll see you next time. That brings us to the end of Pechacucha 75.